have you ever noticed? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Three times. I hope you're all well. And I hope everybody in your family is well. And no, we're not going to play this now. The biggest hold mistake on, hold on, hold make. on. <laughs> it has a mind of its own, believe me. That's what happens. Okay. That's what happens, a mind of its own. <laughs> I hope everything is good. I wanted to start this morning by telling you a little bit about us and about me. And most of you know, but I will just uh, let you hear a little bit for a moment. This is coming to you from the Hollywood Brahma Kamaris. And we are live this morning, of course, as you know. And Roz is on a watch, making a watch party. And she's trying to do it on two different sites, so we'll see if that works. And the Brahma Kamaris have been since 1969. And, you know, all of us, because we're all kind of stuck in now, although they've opened up a lot of places, which is against my better judgment, but that's just my opinion. But uh, I'm thinking that maybe, maybe we all should take the time to try to say right here in the present. Because sometimes we are concerned and worried about what's gonna to happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. And right now, our concern is this moment. This moment that you're here with me and that you're here with the Hollywood Brahma Kumaris, which we've been doing meditations for over 15, 16 years. First, we started at the Hollywood Palladium, and then we came to the Hollywood Library, and we have been there for 15 years or so. And so it's been a wonderful run, and we're hoping that the future will bring something new something new, exciting, and for us. And of course, you can always go to the BK Miami Meditation page on Facebook. There's a lot of talks by all our BK Miami meditators. There's some beautiful talks on there. You can always listen to Sister Jenna, who is also on every evening, and Go to YouTube and type in 78 or BB Butler 78 and there's meditations galore. So you can keep going with what you know and what you studied along with Roz and myself. So I think it's a wonderful thing to keep your, your mind active and not to be worried about what is the future going to bring? That's why I chose the topic today, being in the present moment or being in the now. And so that's one of the things that is classic for any meditator. When you meditate and you connect with God, the Supreme Soul, which you see the picture here over my head, <clears throat> when you meditate and you do that, you can stay right in the present moment. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to do that. But let's start all together how we always do and have always done with Om Shanti. Om meaning I am and Shanti meaning peace. So let's say it three times loud you're all in your home, just like I'm here. And let's do that all together. And I can hear you. <laughs> I'm teasing, but I can hear you. I know you're doing it. So come on, join me. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. And one more, big and loud. Come on, Howard, come on, big and loud. Om Shanti. Wonderful. Now I want to start your day off really good. 
because I found this wonderful, wonderful meditation and I want to make sure, well actually it's just begin your day, how to begin your day with excitement and joy and learning how to be positive every single day while we're in the midst of this pandemic. So just listen to this for a little bit. On my own. Let me get this rid of the advertisement. Since I was young, my family played lots of cards. Okay. If you're in a great mood, you will produce great results. You will have a great day. The better your attitude, the better the results you produce. The better your attitude, the better you can handle, overcome, and thrive through challenges and difficulties that come your way. So get yourself in a great mood. Do whatever it takes to get that feeling first thing in the morning. Whatever works for you, meditation, reading, gratitude, music, exercise, these are all good options that get you in state. When your mind is positive and clear, you can handle just about anything, can't you? And when you can face challenges with a clear mind, they lose their power. They no longer halt your progress. They no longer have a strangle over your day or your life. You simply choose the best way to move forward and move on. Most people don't start their days like this. Most people aren't happy. Don't be most people. Be the minority. The minority who start their day with positive expectations. Look at yourself in the mirror and repeat to yourself, today is going to be a great day. Today is no going to be what a happens, great day. Today I will see the good. No matter what happens, I will do the right thing. No matter what happens, I will give my all today. Today I will give my best, so tomorrow will be better. We all have the same amount of time, but some people make the most of it, and some people drudge through it. Make the most of yours. Live with a smile on your face. Believe you are deserving of a great life, and get out there and create one. If you change your thinking, you can change your life. So how do you change your thinking? Well, how do you change your body? You change the body by changing what you feed your body. You change your body by changing how you work your body. The same is true for your thinking. Change what you feed your thoughts. Feed it with positive affirmations and beliefs. Feed it with new knowledge on self-development. If you learn how to change, you will change. Work out your mind with books, with audio. Books and audio that expand your existing mindset into something greater. Grow yourself by learning more. Grow yourself by doing the things successful people do. No matter what this day brings, a challenge, a miracle, an unexpected blessing, whatever it is, I am grateful for it. Affirm to yourself every day, today will be a great day. Something magical will happen today. Something truly amazing will happen today. Don't be afraid of missing out. Be afraid of being in the exact same place as you are now. One year from today. Five years from today. Ten years from today. Struggling to pay the bills. Struggling for energy. Struggling to find that passion in your life. Visualize what you are going to do today to get more out of your life. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Don't you love that? That's my morning motivation. Every day I listen to that. I listen to that and say, today is going to be a great day. And it's especially great because I see all our friends from the Hollywood Meditation Group and others that, that are not from our group, but we're together. And that's the most important thing. So we're talking about staying in the present moment. And that's what we want to do. So I have a couple hints for you. Uh, I was listening to an interview with Oprah 
and Eckhart Tolle. And I was listening carefully to every word he said. As you know, he wrote The Good Earth and he wrote The Power of Now. And so we have to think about all of those things because if we anticipate and worry and doubt about the future, we're going nowhere. But he said, and this is exactly what he told us, two hints how to stay in the now. First, ask yourself this question. Am I breathing? I think so. Ask yourself that. Well, of course you are. In and out, the breaths like the ocean waves. And the second thing to do, and you realize you're breathing, and when you realize that, you have just entered the present moment. You have just entered into the present moment when you ask yourself that. Now, the second hint that Eckhart gave to us, and it's a really good one, pay attention to everything that you do. Like washing your hands, you know we have to wash our hands so often. But smell the soap. Look at the foam that it makes. Stay into that. Feel the water. Feel that water coming on your hands and on your fingers and on your wrists. Think about that and then you're right there in the present moment. How about when you're cooking? Go into a state of love and meditation. If you're stirring a pot of soup, stir it with intention, with staying right there with the stirring and the pot of soup. Whatever you're doing, if you're taking a walk, look at the sidewalk, look at the flowers, look at the trees. Pay attention to what you're doing at that moment and then your mind cannot be filled with all of these difficulties that could lie ahead. But they won't for you because you are going to stay right here in this present moment. So this is a way, and I thought it was wonderful what he said, of just making sure the past is gone, and you've all heard this, and the present is where we are. That's why it's called the present. The future is unknown. None of us know what the future may bring. So we stay right here in the present, which is a gift to all of us. So let's listen. I have a wonderful meditation here to listen to how to let go of the past and stay in the present Today moment. Today was our day to release everything that we are holding on to of That's the past. Sister Shivani. If you've still not done it, then we have to do it now. We've held on to it for very long, thinking that it was natural. Let's scan our life. It could be our childhood. It could be the growing up time. It could be with a teacher in school. It could be with a parent at home. It could be a friend amongst everybody. Or it could be as we move on. Oops. Come. Our relationship with our spouse. It could be just Wait, a... wait, wait, we'll get back. Okay. Sorry, glitches. We're not the way you wanted them to be. Or just were the way which you never thought they could be. But I want to start this over. It's so important and it's not long. So let's do that. Today was our day to release everything that we are holding. Come on. You know cyberspace. If you've still not done it, then we have to wait, do it Wait, wait, wait. 
Sister Shivani. Okay, you're the bee. We've held on to it for very long, thinking that it was natural. Let's scan our life. It could be our childhood. It could be the growing up time. It could be with a teacher in school. It could be with a parent at home. It could be a friend amongst everybody. Or it could be as we move on our career, our relationship with our spouse. It could be just anybody. Or it could be a stranger on the road. Who just were not the way you wanted them to be. Who just were the way which you never thought they could be. And you created hurt. And you thought it was so normal to get hurt. And you even believed that you can never forget it. The wound was too deep. And they were the ones who created the wound. How could you heal yourself? But you've held on to it for very long. It's time to heal. Because if you don't heal yourself today, if you don't clean the wound, it's only going to increase. The pain, the hurt, will shift to resentment, can also shift to hatred tomorrow. And it's a part of your being. It's not about them anymore. It's not about what they did anymore because that's over. It's past. It's about who you are today because you're still holding on to it. Past is over. Pause and tell yourself, why did they do that to me? I didn't do anything wrong to them. Why did they do that to me? There is an answer. Everything people do to us today is a consequence of a past karmic connection. Maybe difficult to believe right now. Maybe difficult to accept. But it's the truth. Everything that's happening is fair. Fair according to the law of karma. So everything they did to me was a consequence of a past karmic connection with them. But how you think, feel today is your present karma. Do you want to continue with the past? Because the past will then flow into the present and present will carry forward to the future. So take this moment, bring them on the screen of your mind and just look at them with compassion. You did what you felt was right. Tell them that. I understand it was a consequence of our past connection, but I refuse to hold it anymore. I just refuse to let it be on my mind anymore. I have the power to hold on to it, but I also have the power to drop it today. Both is my choice. Sit back, close your eyes, and just say it three times. I release the past, I let it go. And see it cleaning and blowing away from the screen of your mind. It's just gone. It's a choice and I'm throwing it out. I release the past and let it go. It's over. It's over. It's over. Om Shanti. Good lesson. Just close your eyes and say, I release the past. It's over. It's over. We learn from the past, but then we stay here in the present moment. In the present moment. And that's so important. Here's another one that's very good. Now to most people, the present moment almost doesn't exist because what they're really interested in is the next moment or the one after that. 
So they live always towards the future. They live towards the next moment. And unconsciously, they regard the next moment, the next point in the future that they need to get to, as more important than this moment. Not realizing that the future moment that they so desperately want to get to, wanting to get it out of the way as quickly as possible, needing to get to the, the end point on a small scale, on a large scale. And so they don't recognize that the future has no existence except as a thought form. So when you always live towards the future, you, you, uh, you live your life trapped in a conceptual reality of thought forms, which assumes a greater significance for you than the, than the immediate reality of life, which is always now. Because your life consists entirely of the present moment. If you truly realize the significance of that statement, your entire life consists of the present moment. Your life is never not this moment. Even when you remember the past, you can only remember it now. And when you think about the future, you can only think about it now. But people live as if the present moment were an obstacle that they need to overcome in order to get to some better point which never arrives. So that's a mad way to live. And it makes living hard. It makes living into an effort. That alignment with where you are right now, to be totally where you are and whatever you are doing even if it doesn't look like your the life purpose for the, you want for the next 30 years, right. whatever you are doing now, to be total in doing it, and no matter what it is, to be true to life by being true to this moment. There is always only this one step, and so you give it your fullest attention. This doesn't mean that you don't know where you're going, it just means that the step that you're taking right now is primary, the destination is secondary and what you encounter at your destination once you get there de depends on the quality of this one step whatever you're doing in any given moment if you do it your best it leads you to the next best moment so you don't have to worry about what's the next moment coming if you only do your best in this moment that's right because when the next moment comes it comes as this moment right you never experience the future as the future you experience the future when it comes as the now because that's all there is it's all there ever is and that's an amazing realization for people to realize life is always just this it's always the now and what happens is most people are living their lives as though the destination the end the well, end is what it's all about. Yes, yeah, as if the end were more important than, than the uh, means. The means. And so the means and the end, are, however, are one. Right. And that means you actually, you, you determine what kind of future you're going to experience by deciding to be totally aligned with the present moment.
gratitude, Om Shanti, gratitude for this moment. Didn't you love that? No cost. We had Eckhart Tolle and Oprah with us this morning. Exciting, very exciting. And the words that they both said, when we live in the present moment, this is where it's at. Oh, you might have to make appointments for a doctor or appointments for a dentist in the future. But that does not mean you can't live for the now. I'm going to expound on what, what Eckhart said before and how to stay in the present moment because I think it's so important. Are you breathing? Ask yourself that question. Well, of course you are. Well, that's, that is the present moment. Once you realize and you listen to your breath, you have just entered the present moment. And then, as you're washing your hands, feel the soap, feel the water, smell the soap, feel the, the soap on your hands and on your arms in the beautiful warm water. We're so grateful that we have those things. We have a home to be in. Wake up in the morning in gratitude and say, thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, God, for keeping me here to spend another day in the power of the present, in the power of love, because being love, which is what you all are, being love and being positive keeps you right here in this present moment. Now I know we all have had worries over the last, it, it, it can't, couldn't be helped. We all have had for the last several months. And what can we do about those? Well, if we keep our mind positive and not think about yesterday, but think about the present moment that we're in and be grateful. We have a home. We have a roof over our head. We have food to eat. There are a lot of people in the world that do not have these things, but we do, and we are grateful for them. We do have this, and if you know anyone who's suffering, send them love. Call, call older people on the phone, talk to them. Increase the power of love and staying present in your life. And the worries and the anxiety and the doubt and the fear will just disappear. Will just disappear. I want to play something about that. And let's see if this is going to work. We'll see. Okay, let's play. Fear is like a great magician that casts the illusion that I have something that the world can take away from me. It makes me believe that love can be taken away, that peace can be taken away, that even my life can be taken away. To dispel this illusion, I have to be willing to go on an inward journey away from the physical world and into the ocean of my spiritual being. I take some time now to rest my mind in stillness. And I begin to sense that peace as it unfolds like a warm light into every cell of this body. I take some time to remember that I am spirit and that before I entered this world, I was complete with peace, with love, with joy. These qualities exist within me 
forever. And the only reason I lose touch with them is I forget who I am. So I take some time now to remember that I am light. I am eternal. Even death cannot finish this light. I am love. And no matter what happens in the outside world, that love will always be within me. When I think on these qualities, when I emerge love in my heart, when I emerge peace in my mind, when I take time to sense my eternity and to remember that I am distinct from this physical world, then I begin to realize that just like the ocean is a world unto itself, my inner world is a world unto itself. My inner world is full of qualities. And just like the physical world offers water, flowers, fruits, and resources, my inner world can offer me so much love, so much peace. So much comfort that no external situation can shake me. The more I practice this awareness that I am light and that the experience of these qualities continues eternally, independent of anything that can happen in the outside world. The more I realize that I am incorporeal, pure and light, the easier it will be to dispel the illusion of fear. And I will realize I have nothing the world can take away from me. Because regardless of anything that happens, I am always light. I am always peace. I am always a child of the Supreme Being. Om Shanti. And when I spoke uh, earlier about Bibi Butler, She's an angel, and that's who was speaking on that meditation. And if you go on YouTube and you type in BB, spelled just how it sounds, Butler 78 or 78 BB Butler, you will hear all of the meditations she does. Her voice is so angelic, and it's beautiful, and she left this world a little bit too soon. And she was talking about fear because so many of us have that fear in our heart and in our mind. But once we realize we must stay right here in the present moment, our life will become more comfortable. Our life will become happier. So when you wake up in the morning, the first thing to do is say, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my home. Thank you for all the things that I have that some people in our world do not. And then take a moment to send love to those people that are suffering. You can't imagine how important those vibrations you send from your heart and from your soul going out to the world bring the world a little bit more of the peace that you are inside. We are all children of the Supreme Father. Does not matter what your background was, does not matter who your parents were, we all have the same Father and we all have the treasures and the fortune by being a child of God. So remember this and stay in the present moment. I have 
another beautiful meditation I want to play for you. And I think it's wonderful also about staying in the present moment. So let's listen. Welcome to Revive Daily. Today we'll be letting go of yesterday and whatever plans we may have for tomorrow. And we will practice being present. Let's start by taking a moment to allow your body to settle into a comfortable position. Begin by taking a full breath in and a long breath out. And when you feel ready, close your eyes. Keep them open if you can. Continue taking in slow, deep breaths. Mentally scan your body from top to bottom, releasing any tension you may be feeling in each area of your body. Feel the body relaxing more and more with each exhale. Use the breath to engage your awareness to this moment. Breathing in the body, noticing every inhale and exhale again and again. Become aware of every sensation you are feeling right now. And if your mind begins to wander, gently bring it back to your breath. Breathe in through your nose. Breathing deeply and consciously. Try noticing all the little details as best you can. The sounds, the smells, the sensations. To practice mindfulness is to practice giving each moment our undivided attention. We're often rushing to the next moment or harping on the past, and we lose too many life experiences when we stop being aware. So let's use today to practice being present. When we eat, let's try to savor every bite. When we walk, let's be aware of our body movement, the breeze, our surroundings. If we have routines that put us in autopilot, let's try changing it up whenever possible. And every so often, just stop, smile, and feel the moment. And breathe. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. With nice, long, deep, breath, being present in this moment with the breath. Breathe. Now, whenever you're ready, narrow your focus back to your body. Slowly stretch out your hands and feet and gently open your eyes. I hope you enjoy today's Revive Daily. As you continue on with your day, allow your breath to help guide your focus to the present moment and really live in it.
<laughs> Om Shanti. Allow your breath to guide you to the present moment, the meditator said, and feel it, feel it, the breath like the ocean goes up and down. Deep breaths in through our nose and out through our mouth and let your stomach expand when you're breathing. This will keep you present. This will keep you focused. This will keep you right here in the present moment. So let's, let's just see what else we have here. Okay, let's do this. I love this, this song. Let's do it. Shanti, do you all know who you were born to be? I'll ask you this question. Maybe next week you'll think about it all week and think about who were you born to be? Your soul. You are filled with qualities and light. Who were you born to be? If you're not doing what you love, then decide to change. You can, it's easy. Do something that you love to do. Whatever it is, if you love to write, I write in a journal every night, a gratitude journal that one of my daughters, or both of my daughters gave to me. I write every night at least three to five things that I'm grateful for. And it's not hard to think about what we're grateful for because so much of the world doesn't have the blessings that we have within. So think about it. 
Who were you born to be? Teacher? A pianist? Someone who plays a musical instrument? Someone who writes? Someone who draws? Do it. Do it. You know, Grandma Moses didn't start until she was over 80 years old. She started to paint and she became very famous. Well, I didn't tell you all to paint if you can't, but maybe you can. Do what you love, especially now, especially in our present moment of this pandemic, especially now, do what you love to do. Do what you love and that will keep you focused and that will keep you in the moment of bliss, of happiness and love and kindness. Gratitude. Thank you, Juanita. Gratitude. Oh my goodness, so important. Maybe next week we'll talk about gratitude. How we have to be thankful for all the little things. How we have to realize our life is what we make it. Our life is what we make it. By staying present and by staying in the place of love and happiness with God as our helper, with God as our director. He is our teacher. He is our fortune. So we stay with him. We meditate. Remember, first thing when you get up in the morning, sit down. Don't even jump up out of bed yet and say, thank you, God. For another day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I don't care if a person lives 95 or 100 years or 50. Gratitude for what that life has given you is so important. And when you stay in a place of gratitude and love, you are in the present moment. I think we have time for maybe one more short meditation. Let's see if I, I have one here. Let's see. Okay, let's do this. This is new. The Almighty 
is the ocean of love, peace and happiness. I am getting those vibrations of love, peace and happiness from the Almighty. It's like a shower from God to me. Now, this energy is spreading throughout my body and even to the baby in the womb. The baby is getting these vibrations from God. With these vibrations from God, me and my baby become so peaceful, powerful and happy. So it's getting to be that time. We've talked a lot about how we can all focus on the now. The future no one knows about. It will come and we'll practice gratitude and acceptance when it does. Leo just said that New York is gradually opening up. Chicago is, Miami is. Again, as I said, it's not my preference, but that's just my opinion. I think we should have waited a little bit, but I can't make judgments. I don't want to, but I know for myself, if I stay, and as Juanita said, an attitude of gratitude, if I stay in that place of love and bliss and happiness and the present moment, Remember what Eckhart said, and I'm going to repeat it a third time. Are you breathing? Ask yourself that. As soon as you realize that you're taking breaths in and out, you have entered the present moment of the breath. And then stay in that present moment. Don't worry, the past is gone. We have to let it go, the future we don't know about. So we have to just accept what comes, stay in an attitude of love and happiness and peace, and believe in yourself because you have the, you have the way to stay positive. You have the knowledge and the understanding to stay positive. And that's the only way that we all, we're in this together. You know how they show you the hands. All of us are in this together. And so let's stay in peace. Let's stay in love. Let's stay in happiness and learn to stay. As soon as you feel yourself worrying or doubt about what the future is gonna bring, come right back to your breath and you will see that'll help you stay in peace. So now a very special song. So I want you all to stand up and dance, hold hands. Let's say like we do at the library, let's do that and Let's just say, oh, let's find this song now. Ah, I got it. From a very special lady who sent us this song. Let's do this. 
hold your hands out or dance, stay in the moment, and let's listen. What is the best kept oh, secret to not, becoming a great singer? Not that. I'm going to answer that question in 30 seconds. Not that. This one. From a giant block of stone, he said, well, he was in their way. My job was simply excavating. I just took away what did not belong. And I know somewhere not so deep inside of me lives that perfect soul. Shanti. Thank you, Juanita. Juanita sent us that song a long time ago, and she just reminded us all that our life, how we live it, is our perfect work of art. Thank you, Juanita. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, all of you, for being with me, because I love you all. You know that. So I wish you angels watching over you. Mitra, I... I love your being here with us. I wish you all angels to hold on to when you're scared and stay in the place of the present and come back next week. Bring a friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Om Shanti. I love you all. Have a beautiful day in the present moment with love and gratitude in your heart. Take care now. Bye-bye.